Man, modern audiences suck. It has been quite a long time since I have felt this passionate, this disgusted, or I guess a more accurate feeling would be more understanding of a studio and its shortcomings. And because I am a part of that modern audience post-COVID, as I like to say, no, I am not talking about that modern audience, I usually tend to stick with and stand by the majority of complaints thrown Hollywood's way for the lackluster and frankly shit entertainment that we've been asked to ingest over the last half decade. The lack of creativity coming from a landscape that supposedly specializes in that field has been nothing short of disappointing, disrespectful, and infuriating in every sense of the word. I understand that the divide between the studio and audience relationship right now is at an all-time low. I understand that we as an audience don't even feel as if they know what we as an audience even want. So trust me, I get that because of the lack of faith, transparency, track record to back it up, and the fact that every movie is hitting whatever streaming service the studio is attached to now in less than two months after its first release, but that is a whole different problem all on its own, why the modern audience feels so jaded, don't have the motivation, and don't feel incentivized to leave the comfort of their own homes to go to the theaters for what now feels like a flip of the coin if you're actually going to receive a quality movie or not. And no, I am not taking into account the financial aspects of going to the movies anymore. It's literally $20 a month to go see every movie you want to see for the entirety of the year. And unless you're living on one of the coasts like I am, then the movie theaters aren't even expensive. It's just a bloke argument to say that finances are the reason why you're not going to the movies. Obviously, we are talking about Furiosa, the newly released prequel spinoff in the Mad Max universe, an IP that while relatively popular and has been popular for quite some time, has not been stained by the plague that is the lack of creativity Hollywood has been spreading around, and that statement still holds true for this iteration. The point of this entire rant is that Shame on us for letting a movie such as Furiosa bomb and flop as hard as this. The reason why I say that it's been a long time since I have felt this type of understanding from a studio's point of view is because, I mean, what more could the audience genuinely be looking for from a summertime blockbuster movie than what Furiosa had at the dinner table? I mean, seriously, let's go through the list. As mentioned before, we have a marketable brand and an IP that has not been tainted by the drought of creativity in this Hollywood era. Check. A-list actors with big name recognition like Anya Taylor-Joy, an absolute queen at her craft, and Chris Hemsworth, who I don't even have to explain. Okay, we're still sounding good. On location settings and practical action set pieces that don't overuse CGI and don't make the movie look like it was filmed in a box. Check. A proven track record behind the camera in writing the script to ensure that we don't have shitty dialogue choices or contrivances that only serve to inorganically push the narrative forward. I mean, what am I missing here? There is seemingly no reason why a movie with this high level of merit would flop like this. Unless, in this instance, the problem lies with the audience. Again, this is filthy work coming from a majority audience that quote-unquote craves good movies and then this happens. Bloke activity, in my opinion. And the worst part is, is that this movie was actually good. <sighs> Alright, I'm good. Enough about the audience and the past numbers. It's just unlucky, I guess. But with that, as always, let's talk. So obviously, as mentioned before, Furiosa is a prequel spinoff movie for a character of the same name. Think X-Men Origins Wolverine in a sense that this movie only really exists to answer questions for a minority amount of people that actually had them. Mostly just the studios. But again, again, as mentioned before, we're in a lack of creativity era in Hollywood, so this is what we as the audience have to work with. Which in this instance, again, isn't a bad thing. It just makes the narrative, stakes, and character journey as a whole relatively simple. Furiosa is pretty much a classic revenge story showcasing the character's life from humble beginnings of a nurtured childhood in the green place to the tortured life we found her in in Fury Road. The movie really kicks off after Furiosa is kidnapped by a group of wastelanders? Raiders? I'm not really sure what they would be called, led by Chris Hemsworth Dementis. A classic psychopath type who wants to take the green place for himself and takes Furiosa under his wing as a surrogate daughter of some sort after crucifying her mother right in front of her. Yeah, mate, I don't think she's gonna really get over that one. Anyway, as time rolls along, 
Dementis has grasped himself quite a bit of power and quite an army to rule over. So much power, in fact, that he's able to broker a deal with the leader of the Citadel, Amorton Joe. The only problem is, is that Amorton Joe wants Furiosa and the deal to become one of his future wives. Well, you would think that would be a problem, but Furiosa's life is pretty shit, so Dementis pretty much just sells her off like an expired can of beans. Unlucky. With that being said, the rest of the movie pretty much follows a standard revenge plot as Furiosa grinds and climbs her way through the ranks of Amorton's men, until eventually being stationed on the War Rig, one of the most badass occupations you could have in a world such as this. I mean, much better than spray painting your face with silver glitter and diving into an 80 mile per hour death machine. Actually, now that I said that, that would be pretty dope. But the question is, is what will Furiosa do? Will she continue to hunt for the man that took everything from her, even if that means losing herself physically and mentally in the process? Or try to search for the family she never had following her newfound freedom within the upper ranks? See, the problem is, is that even with an absolutely incredible synopsis such as that, unfortunately, when it comes to a prequel spinoff of a character that we have already seen the conclusion of their story, the audience is faced with the question of, what is even the point? Prequel spinoffs of characters don't work in the same way as a prequel surrounding a narrative overall. The best example that I can give in this instance would be Star Wars A Rogue One Story. While yes, many believe, it could definitely argue that it was an unnecessary movie for a plot hole that not many people tend to really care about in the short term. In order to play devil's advocate, you could argue that it was a movie that was necessary in order to avoid long-term scrutiny of such a poorly written plot hole. Whatever your stance on the matter is, in my opinion, it is disingenuous to base a movie off the merits of why it is and not what it is. And we as an audience would be lying if we said that Furiosa didn't have high octane and engaging action sequences. We would be lying if we said that Furiosa didn't have minimalistic but direct and intelligent dialogue sequences that encapture the very essence of the characters on screen. We would be lying if we said that Furiosa didn't have great acting performances from our two main leads. I mean, Shout out to Chris Hemsworth. He obviously cares about the fan response to his character's portrayal in Thor Love and Thunder, and while a streaming movie for Netflix like Extraction 2 wasn't quite a big enough platform for him to showcase to us the audience that there is still some crap left over from his Marvel days. And I thought, and I'm sure he thought, this movie was going to be that big break back into the spotlight, or even back into the good graces of his own talent. But even for all of my simping and glazing of Anya Taylor-Joy, who I don't even have to praise at this point because she just pisses excellence, Chris Hemsworth was really the star of this movie, and it's unfortunate that this wasn't the break that he probably thought it was going to be. Overall, this is a movie that I simply can't get behind the audience on this one. To be given a story that while, yes, pretty predictable, was still as summertime of a blockbuster we as an audience are going to get. And what makes it even more unfortunate is that this is the same crowd that is more than likely going to make Deadpool and Wolverine a billion dollar movie. And don't get me wrong, I will also be contributing to that narrative, but I also contribute to the narrative that other films could still be hitters in a wasteland of shitters. So while Furiosa financially will not live up to the expectations placed upon it, in this instance, it is not the fault of the movie itself. Shame on us. So in a ranking system, or I guess you could say a grading system that is relatively new that eventually won't be new, we started this in 2024 and honestly, I would say it's been going pretty solid so far. I would go say watch some of those reviews even though you're just going to see where I rank them all here, but I mean, you can still go do your boy a solid. With that being said, I'm pretty comfortable standing on business that Furiosa was an actual movie, and I'm sure it will be a movie that will show up on many YouTubers top 10 list by the end of 2024 even if the box office doesn't reflect that success. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.